guys and good afternoon creeps hi guys and creeps i wanted to jump on here real quick because breezy i had a couple of things to um not be in the first video of me doing the unboxing of the things that i got the box had failed if you remember in part of the videos the front one of the boxes had fell fallen to the floor and i did check all of the boxes and i made sure nothing was in it wanted to share with you guys that thank you breezy thank you breezy breezy also sent me some money and a cute card and she also included a very well needed uh, 40 bucks. She included that. Girl, every every little bit counts. This was very well needed. I'm going to the laundromat with this money. I'm paying the landscaper again with this money. He just left, but I, he didn't do all of the job. I'm going to have to get him back over here so he could do something else. It's a different landscaper. Breezy always be paying for my landscaping. Thank you, Breezy. Okay, so... Uh, she says, I know it's not much, but I hope um, you like your care box, Breezy. She says, hope every little thought this brings as sunshine to your day and brightens every hour in the very nicest ways. And this is such a beautiful card. Look at it, guys. It's a cute little bear with some flowers. And she included 40 bucks in it. Thank you, Breezy. I got things that I got to do with this money. So, yes, girl, it really does help me. I'm talking fast because I forgot to clean this camera off and I don't have much space left on it. So I just wanted to give you guys a real quick update about um, about Ash. Um, I wanted to say in the I didn't I forgot to say something in the other video about the update about the CPS. I got two things to talk about. The first thing is um, I did want to talk about my visitation rights. Um, they they are going to have me with um, supervised visitation on the Zoom as I mentioned in the other video. But uh, I did request that um, I could get her, to have Ash for Halloween. Um, they said that it, ha it has to go through the case manager, to, uh, you know, depending on how the Zoom sessions work. And if we do well together on the Zoom sessions, then I'm going to get to have Ash um, alone with her on the weekends and on the holidays. You know, so I'm trying to get her um, for, uh, for Halloween. Um, I'm trying my best to get her for all the holidays. I want her for Thanksgiving, Christmas. And then her our reunification date is March 22nd, so she should be back. She should be here in this location on March 22nd. But I'm I'm trying to get visitation rights for the holidays that she can come here. She's currently 200 miles away from me, but they said we can meet you somewhere halfway or something, and that we can establish a drop-off point where you have to come pick her up. And so you know, um, I'm trying to work with them to get her for the holidays. Okay, so I wanted to tell. My daughter Megs, um, I wanted to say Megs, um, Ash is no longer um, down the street from you on George Jenkins. She's no longer across from CVS. Um, where Ash is at currently, she is um, a little bit past Arbendale. Um, she's on the Lake Channel, okay? Uh, it's called a Lake Connection or Lake Channel area where um, I, I'm going to show you some clips of where she currently lives. I think it's absolutely beautiful out there. I did find this location for them and it's a beautiful location. It's surrounded by several large lakes, it's several large bodies of water. And um, they're actually on something called um, a lake connection. Okay, it's past Arbondale, it's in Polk County, but it's past Arbondale. And um, I wanted to tell Megs, no, she's not around the corner from you, but people don't know how far, Ar Arbondale is not that far from them, it's like 11 miles, okay. It ain't that far from my daughter Meg. So she's about ele she's about uh, eleven to fifteen miles from you now. So you know you're not that you're still. A, she had to leave from the other location because her the bitch grandmother was in a fifty five plus trailer park, and they don't allow children at a fifty five plus. So she had to go to an all ages park. And um, I wanted to give people some information about trailer parks, especially in Polk County where. Where uh, where we where I used to live and where my daughter lives and um, you know I, I got a lot of relatives I got a brother in Polk County I got a, uh, you know uh, the bitch mother in Polk County I got an uncle in Orange County I got a lot of relatives in in all different parts of uh, Florida different counties and stuff and uh, you, you know I got Alabama Cottons the so called uh, the, I'm not even going to get into it but he's down in Broward County and you know I I got I got um, Family and friends all over Florida, everywhere. Okay, so what I wanted to say, and yes, I could call Alabama Cotton a friend because I, me and him rocked out on some stuff. You know, he helped me out quite a bit, and he is a friend because he got me out of a lot of, um, 
he got me out of a bad situation before. So he, he ain't never done me dirty, so I can, he actually helped me. So I can call Alabama Cotton a friend. Okay. Um, so uh, what I wanted to say real quick is that I wanted to talk about, about uh, the place that Ash lives at. Okay, and the misconception that, you know, about trailer park trash or white trash or whatever, because it's a, it's a, it's a lot of stigma, uh, stig, uh, what is it, stigma, uh, stigmatism about, you know, people that live in trailer parks. Like, uh, you know, it, it depends on who you think. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to explain how, how trailer parks work and why you shouldn't look down on somebody in a trailer park because, you know, I actually love trailer parks. I think they're beautiful. Um, I, you know, I, I love trailer park lifestyles. I, I like, I love trailer parks. I ain't got no problem with no trailer parks. Okay, so uh, what I wanted to say is that um, the trailer park that they moved to is, uh, okay, across from them, they got this elegant trailer park, okay? And they got where they only accept tra trailers that are over, that were made in 2017 and newer, okay? And they don't accept nothing older than 2017, okay? That trailer park is very, very elegant, and it's very new and very ritzy. You got some trailer parks, when you go in there, everything is all glittery and well lit and flowers everywhere and little parks. They call it a park for a reason because it look, it got trees and, and scenery and good landscaping and golf carts and shit like that. So, you know, it's not, it, it is low income. Yes, it is. But it's low income where people actually take care of the property. It might look like when the trailers get old, they do look battled down. Because you, especially in a hot climate, like where we... You know, this is Florida, it's hot. So, you know, the sun beats on them, the roofs get hot, the metal gets hot. And over time, you know, they, they do get battled by winds and rains and storms. And they do start looking at battle look, okay. But that, you know, that's just how it goes because they do get old and then you have to sell them and then buy a new one or, or whatever. They get swapped out all the time by some people. So what I'm trying to tell you that the trailer park that Ash lives in Okay, the bitch grandmother she owns uh she owns the uh the trailer that she that she has. Her trailer was built uh I forget when is is not a new model so she couldn't get into the high end um the high end elegant park across the street, but she was able to get into the older park where they just accept anything. Okay, that means that it could look, it could look really old. It, it, they don't they don't care they don't it don't matter. When it when it's like that and it says all ages, that means that they'll accept anything. Some trailer parks don't just accept anything; they do have age requirements so that they don't make the park look bad. Okay, so uh, so they got into a um, into a all ages. They'll take accept anything, any make, any model. Okay, and it's an older park. When they do that, that that means it's an older park. Okay. So the park that they live at live at now, I think is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous. And they're on um, this lake. I'm not gonna tell you what the lake, uh, it's, a, it's a big lake. It's, uh, they live on a 550 acre lake. And they, they actually have lakefront property where their door and their windows are facing the lake overlooking the, um, the pier and some boats. People go fishing on the boats and across from there, they got um, some higher end houses. And then, um, they, they, it, then they got a little broke down park in there. Then they got uh, a, a little broke down clubhouse in there. But I like beautiful poverty looks. I ain't got no problem with that. I think their park is awesome. The only downside of the park is that it is in a very rural area because it is on the lake connectors. And that means they are connected by nothing but waters and lakes and stuff. And because of that, there's not like a like an area where you could walk. They don't have sidewalks and stuff. So you have to you have to get a lift car. They don't have a car, so they gotta take lifts and Ubers everywhere. So and they don't have cabs because it's out in the country on the lake connectors, so they don't have cabs. So they can't really just go walk into the store or anything like that. So the closest store that they got is a Walmart, which is a mile away. And you know if it says Walmart on it, you know it's, it's really rural. Okay, if that's the first store that they can get to is Walmart and it's a mile from them. And then they got, they got, they got, it's, it's a, just a very beautiful location. Now where they used to live in the old uh, neighborhood where we came from, 
they were living in a in an area where across the street was a sicko gas station down the street was a family dollar right next door to them was a beauty salon next door to that was a pharmacy next door to that across the street was a cvs they had a big shopping plaza with save a lot they had a mess two mexican restaurants a plasma donation center which they they ain't use that because they they now they don't fuck with that obviously they had a subway they had a chinese shop they a uh, chinese um food shop they had a big mexican store uh, a, a Mexican store where they could buy Mexican uh, stuff from Mexico. They then they, they walked further down. They had another Family Dollar, another Dollar General, another. The Witchcraft store was right on the next block, the uh, one that I used to show you. And then they had uh, three taco stands, another Mexican restaurant. It's mainly Mexican stuff over there. And then they uh, they had a, a Hardee's. Then across the street from that, they had a Kangaroo where they had crispy crunchy chicken in there then they had a taco bell then they had a burger king then they had the chevron all of that was all in one little location so at night they could just walk and do all the stuff they needed to do and then from there also across the railroad tracks they had another store with a primo water machine then from there they had a harvey's then they had another family dollar down the street from there then they had ariana park from there they had all kinds of stuff all kind it was all kinds of stuff where they used to live where I used to live, it was all, when you would see me go to the Chevron, you didn't see all the rest of the stuff that was in the neighborhood. Everything was all walking distance, so you could just walk. I mean, when you would see me go to the Chevron, all the rest of that stuff, if I would have made a left, and then I would have made another right, all that stuff was right there. But if I would have kept going, you would have seen all the restaurants right there by, across from the Hardee's and the Kangaroo. Okay, so they don't have all that. So now they just, they just in the, in the country. Okay, they don't, that's the only downside to that. They ain't got, they, they, don't, they don't have access to all that, all that good stuff that they had. Oh, and they had two laundromats. They could just go right to the laundromat there. Plus they had a laundromat inside their park, trailer park. Now they don't have none of that. They don't have none of that at all. All they got is lakes and water and country. They, they ain't got nothing. So, you know, um, you know, but I, I feel like, you know, my daughter can grow up and say, hey, I live right on a lake such and such. I could open my door and see the lake. And I was, uh, if I would have been a little kid and I had, because I love water. I love water. I would have been the happiest kid ever. I would have grew up as the happiest kid just being able to say, hey, I could open my door and I could step out and I would be right on lakefront property. And I could, hey, I could just get, jump, go on the pier and get in the boat and, and go, go out on the water. I mean, I feel like she is so fortunate. She is so fortunate to live the way she's living. I, Because honestly, my childhood was a disaster. <laughs> I was a miserable child. I was very sad. I was in, I was in a horrible living condition. I, I mean, I, yes, I lived across from Canada. But the Canadians and, and where I lived was totally different. The Canadians had it beautiful across the water and then we had it bust down and raggedy and ugly. Okay, so, you know, where when I opened my goddamn door, it was it was burnt up buildings and, 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 and trash and, and broken bottles and, and busted out windows and broke down cars and smashed up, uh, you know, and, and it was just a disaster boom. It was a disaster boom. <laughs> it was horrible. You woke up, you open the door, ugh, oh, it's so ugly out there. God damn, it's trash everywhere. God damn, it's filth everywhere. God damn, is it a dead rat out there? God damn, what the fuck? It stinks out there. God damn, it's ugly as fuck out there. When they gonna tear that raggedy burnt up building down? God, okay, that was that was how I feel. But, but little ass, she could open her door at the trailer park world and say, wow, it's just so beautiful out there. It's just so lovely. Let's go to the park and play. And now it's all clean at the park. She got playground equipment. And she could just, you know, go to the park in a beautiful environment. <laughs> I feel like, you know, my child really has a, a compare my life. I, when I compare my childhood to hers, I didn't, I didn't have beautiful dresses like that. Like how she wore it to the state fair. My cousin G from Las Vegas bought that for her. I didn't get no Elsa dress. Elsa wasn't even thought of. Um, I did have some little clothes at one small part of my life, but most of the time I was broke down, raggedy, and busted. I didn't have no good shoes. 
I never, I never owned a pair of Nikes until I was old enough to buy them myself. I didn't have no designer clothes. I was, I was the raggediest kid in my class. I didn't have clothes for picture day. I dreaded that because I, I was literally like a, I looked like a hobo. I was dirty. I was raggedy. I was busted. I mean, the reason why I was dirty because my mother didn't wash my clothes and I was a little kid, like nine years old in a cold region where we didn't even have hot water. So I had no choice but to go there dirty. Um, I had, I didn't even have boots and the, sh and the snow would go all the way up to my knees and I had um, what they call pumpkin seeds the cheapest shoes you could find for two dollars and they were just not even milk for the winter they were summer shoes they were called the pumpkin seeds people would look at me and laugh and say pumpkin seed underneath my they my nickname was pumpkin seed because that's all the bitch would buy me i never had proper shoes on not for the climate i didn't have on a warm coat a lot of times the the, the she's lucky she didn't get they didn't have the cps back then they would say uh the teacher would say are you cold honey do you have a coat? I say, this is all I got. I don't have nothing else. And they would just look and shake their head. I was the bummiest of the bummiest of the bummiest, the raggediest of the raggediest of the raggediest. I was, I was, I was toe up from the flow up raggedy. Bro, I mean, bummy broke. Barely had money for, uh, for school lunches. <laughs> Ooh, so when I think about how my child is growing up, she's a spoiled brat living on lakefront property okay so you know you can say what you want about the trailer park but baby that is luxury living compared to what i witnessed <laughs> oh say uh, okay let me say this real quick okay let me say this real quick i'm gonna say this and then i'm gonna get off um what i wanted to tell you guys don't try to judge nobody from the trailer park okay don't try to judge nobody because they got some uh motherfuckers that you know they got a couple of different types of motherfuckers maybe three or four different types of motherfuckers you got motherfuckers that live on what they call agricultural lands and the motherfuckers got uh, you know they pay for these agricultural lands out of their bank account they didn't get a bank loan because a lot of agricultural lands you can't get bank loans for agricultural lands um they they basically these agricultural lands that that means you can't buy you can't you can buy the land but you can't build a house on it so you got to have farming equipment, uh, cattle, you know, horses, whatever uh, livestock you want, but, and not the gorilla bones. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> just joking. <laughs> just joking. Let me move on. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to educate you real quick. Cause you don't, you don't got good sense if you're down in the trailer parks. Okay. So what I'm, what I'm saying is, okay, let's say for example, a motherfucker, he got, he got tons and tons of money in the bank. He don't need no bank loan. He, he can't, don't need financing. But he, he buys a bunch of land because he got future plans for it that he want to he wanna bankroll for himself without a bank loan. So he can't, by the zoning and code enforcement, he can't build a house on the property. So, But he want to live on the property, obviously, because he bought it. So the only thing he can get is a, is a trailer. So he buys a trailer home. Now this type of motherfucker will live in the trailer home for about 10 years. Then he'll find somebody else to buy it they'll be able to just drive it off his property because you can't put uh, concrete and stuff on agricultural lands because those lands, you could damage the land by putting cement and, and uh, putting a, uh, a structure on it. You can't do that, it's illegal. So once somebody takes it off of his property, he's the type of motherfucker that every 10 years, he gonna get a brand new house, okay? He gonna get a brand new trailer put on his property that he paid for with cash. He goes and picks it out, buys a brand new, that one gets old, he sells that one, go, go down there, buy him another one and get it on this property. He always switching them out, so they always, somebody always come up and buy them. He put it on the market 24 hours later, it's gone. It's going to be gone fast. It, as soon as somebody sells one, boom, they, they out of there. Boom, pull it out, hurry up and get it out, get it out. Boom, get it out, bring it in. Okay, it's moving fast, everything moving. Okay, because it's on wheels, just go, go, go. Okay. That's how the bitch mother is. She she had it on my brother's property. My brother got over an acre of land. So she had the trailer on my brother's property. He put her out. She He pulled it out of his property, took it over to uh, George Jenkins. Then I knew this guy, he had a truck, uh, which I set this one up. She don't know, she ain't doing shit at all. So I called this guy, he said, yeah, I got a truck. Anybody with a truck can do it as long as they got a trailer hitch, anybody. 
he said i could i i go get it and put it over to the lakes so he went and hitched up and pulled over the lake that motherfucker been moving three times in six months and it and it got full water connection sewage connection light connection everything by the time it gets there boom they just hook it up to all the stuff all the utilities hooked up in less than an hour they got running water showers toilets full light fixtures lights lit up all type of lit well lit structures everything lit up you know brand new bathtub brand, um, now they they got yeah they got a bathtub a shower and um a toilet stool and kitchen sink kitchen area they got everything they got an oven they got all of that okay but what i'm trying to tell you when they get there they just hook everything back up so you unhook them unhook all the utilities unhook the sewage the water pipes the water that comes with a water hose that you roll back in hook that up to water and you good you got a, a water heater in there for hot water it ain't it ain't shit okay so they just move them around if they need them okay I was sitting on my porch uh, a couple of nights ago. I saw all these uh, RVs going up, getting up on uh, the exchange, going to New going up north to New York and Canada and all points in between. A lot of the snowbirds are leaving, so I'm just sitting there. It's like 10 of them. Every few minutes, is, is another one. Boom, they riding, pulling their um, pulling their trailers, their trailer homes with them, with them. They pulling them, and then they, when the when the winter comes, they just pull them back and then they those are called snowbirds the snowbirds leave in the summer because it's cooler up where they need to be and then when it when the uh, winter comes they just come back so they they got two houses they live in their uh, they live in the trailer here in florida then when they got when they get back up there they live in their uh proper house wherever they come from they just go back and forth they, those are called snowbirds snowbirds be uh going back and forth so uh, what happens is they're humans. Don't get it twisted. They're humans, but we call them the snowbirds because they're not really from Florida. They don't have a Florida. Um, uh, they 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 might not even have a Florida ID. They wherever they come from, their real location is somewhere else. Okay. So and and Ash is a na native Floridian. She was born in Florida. She she she's a native Floridian. So uh, she she lived in the real native Floridian lifestyle of gator country lifestyle. She's a real country girl, native Floridian country gator, backwoods country girl, real trailer park. Trailer park country is Ashlyn Katie Ray. Just listen to the name. You know she's from the trailer park. Ashlyn Katie Ray from the goddamn trailer park of backwoods Polk County. That's where the fuck she come from. Okay, so anyway, I'll tell you about the other motherfuckers. Okay, you got the Confederate flag trailer park dudes that have the F-150 or F-250 or F-350 pickup trucks. The Confederate flag all and the Trump stickers all over that motherfucker. They don't give a fuck how raggedy it looks with the motherfucking plaid uh, shirt on and the, and the dirty looking jeans and the, and the ball cap with Confederate flag on the top. That's the backwoods country gator dudes. They don't give a fuck, but they they be having like they own the land and they just have a trailer on it. It's just trailer a trailer park. I don't call them trailer trash because I rock out on that. I I think they look really hot and sexy. I like the trailer park dudes. <laughs> I, they could smash. They could smash. <laughs> they could smash. Uh, and that's the new term that the kids are saying now. They could smash that. That means uh, that's the. And when I grew up, they said they could hit that, they could fuck that, they could do, they could smash that. That's the, they could smash the pumpkin type. That's the, that's what the new, the new term is that the kids are saying. They could smash that. Okay, so anyway, and yeah, don't, don't try to judge somebody's bank account based on the trailer park, bitch. Because um, if you, if you don't know the lifestyle, don't try to judge no motherfucking body. Don't think that you're too good to end up in the trailer park. Don't act like that. You can't judge nobody. You don't know their economic situation. The motherfucker that got that live on the agricultural land, I'm pretty sure you had to get your house bank financed and take out a house loan, FHA loan, military loan, veterans loan. That motherfucker paid for all his shit in cash. He got more than you, baby. So don't try to judge nobody from no trailer park and call him white trash when you ain't even you don't even own shit. The bank owns all your shit. But he owns all his. You don't own shit. You don't own shit. So don't try to judge no white man that you think that you better than. You think that you better than somebody from the trailer park. You ain't got shit. They got more than you do. They own their property. You don't. 
most likely the motherfucker that's talking shit you got you owe you owe money to the bank bitch that means that your house is really not even yours it belongs to the bank let you miss a few payments where are you where are you gonna be at homeless where is he gonna be at on in his own property that he don't owe nobody he don't owe you shit he don't owe you an explanation he loves where he lives and honestly the trailer park areas they keep them beautiful and clean so anyway guys live fiercely love viciously and remember atheism is unstoppable bye guys